From Hollywood, the Judy Canova Show. Brought to you each week by the Colgate Palm Olive Tea Company. Makers of Halo Shampoo to glorify your hair. And the new Super Suds. With a carload of suds for whiter duds. The Judy Canova Show with Mel Blanc, Ruby Dandridge, Joe Kearns, Gail Gordon, George Neese, Verna Felton, The Statesman, Charles Danton and his orchestra, and starring Judy Canova. <laughs> This summer, Judy is going on a personal appearance tour with her own stage show. And all day long, she's been besieged by people who want to get into the act. That's right, Howard. Say, how are you coming, Judy? Are you through interviewing people? No, no, but still got a few more to talk to. Uh, come in, lady, you're next. Oh, uh, thank you. <laughs> hmm, what kind of an act do you do? I do a speciality dance. Something like Little Egypt. Uh, Little Egypt. Uh, do, do audiences go for that? Honey, when I imitate Egypt, I have them laying in the Nile. <laughs> well, my speciality dance is really something. And what do you use, sands or bubbles? Sands or bubbles? I'll have you know I don't use either. This I gotta see. <laughs> Say, honey, if I go with your act, do I get a chance to kiss the handsome leading man? You want to kiss a leading man? Mm -hmm. At your age? You ought to be ashamed. Honey, at my age, I'm proud. <laughs> well, uh, call me if you need me, honey. <laughs> Say, uh, Judy, maybe if you'd put an ad in the Hollywood trade papers, you might get higher class talent. Yes, you're right, Howard. That's how I got my start, answering an ad in the theatrical paper. Never will forget that ad. It said, wanted girl entertainer. Must be respectable until August the 1st. <laughs> Say, Judy, was your first personal appearance on the stage a success? Was it? I broke up the show. What happened? Well, sir, I had to do a quick change on the stage in the dark, you see. Oh, yeah, uh-huh. So one night I called from a type and the electrician thought I said light. <laughs> Be somebody else wanting an audition. Come in. Howdy, mister. Are you a vaudeville actor? Well, ma'am, you might say I'm a matinee idol. <laughs> really? Yes, ma'am. I, I played one matinee and I've been idle ever since. <laughs> but uh, I, I do impersonations, ma'am. I imitate a tobacco auctioneer. 22. 23, 24, 25. Well, golly, ain't you supposed to talk faster than that? No, ma'am. I advertise a slow burning tobacco. <laughs> you know, my voice sells a lot of tobacco. I got that certain something. Yeah, you got something all right, but I ain't certain what it is. <laughs> Say, who's this fellow with you? He's Herbert. My 
I'm going to be a partner. Oh, what do you do, Herbert? Oh, I, I tap my head with a hammer and play it like a xylophone. <laughs> you tap your head with a hammer? Hmm? Uh, what does it sound like? I don't know. I never hear it. It always knocks me unconscious. <laughs> Tell me, do, do you always hit your head with a hammer? Oh, yeah. I'll throw it. Whatever I do, I use my head. <laughs> well, you've sure got a point there. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Well, that sounds like another one, Judy. Come in. Miss Canova, I wrote a song and I sent it to you, and I've been sitting home every Saturday waiting for you to sing it, but you didn't. Whoppin'? Whoppin'? Yeah, whoppin'. Oh, oh, you mean what happened? Yeah, that's what I said, whoppin'. <laughs> uh, was it a good song? Oh, Miss Canova, this was the best song I ever wrote, and I wanted you to sing it, so I sent it to you. Whoppin'? <laughs> But on the way out, you can ask the fellow at the desk, whopping. Hey, you talk funny. <laughs> Everybody in radio is crazy. I ask a simple question, nobody knows whopping. I ask whopping, nobody knows whopping. <laughs> oh, Howard, if this is another vaudeville act, I just can't take it. I'm sorry, but... Oh, it's Mr. Manfield, my publicity man. Hello, Mr. Manfield. Hello, Judy. Say, you've been busy getting ready for your trip, haven't you? I sure have. Interviewing people, arranging my transportation, and packing my clothes. Have you got your itinerary? No, it ain't come back from the laundry yet. <laughs> uh, Judy, I was speaking about your day-by-day -day personal whereabouts. Personal whereabouts? Oh, them. I just switched them through the super sun. <laughs> Judy, I mean, I want to know which towns and cities you'll visit. Oh, oh, well, well, I ain't quite sure yet, but I hope we play near Cactus Junction. You know, last year, Ma came to see my act. Really? Did you meet your mother at the train? Meet her there? Yes, no, I've known her for years. <laughs> Judy, why have you been interviewing so many people? Well, you see, I got room in my stage show for one more act, but it's got to be sensational. I want the kind of an act that'll make the audience rise to their feet Throw the hats up in the air and shout, Pardon me for talking in your face, Anita. <laughs> oh, hello, Pedro. Senorita, I have a funny joke you can tell on your stage for the summer. Did you hear about the man who crossed an owl with a goat? He crossed an owl with a goat? He, he was trying to raise some hoot nannies. <laughs> Senorita, I wish I could act on a stage with you. Why, Pedro? Do you think you could be an actor? Well, Senorita, my girl says when it comes to kissing, I am like a movie star. Ah, uh, your girl said that, huh? Si. Yeah, she said I am a Tyrone without the power. <laughs> Pedro, gee, I'd like to use your jokes, but you see, what I'm looking for is an act that would be sensational. Oh, Senorita, I have just the thing for you. A little baby that plays the piano. I heard it myself. Oh, now, Pedro, how could a little baby possibly strike a full chord on a piano? Easy, Senorita. The baby sits on the piano and bounces up and down. <laughs> you mean to tell me the baby learned to play the piano that way? See, si, that baby learned from the bottom up. <laughs> Senorita, do you want me to get the prodigal child? Yes, Pedro, you get that child prodigy and bring it over to the house and we'll meet you there later. Mm. Golly, Mr. Manfield, we've been waiting here three hours and Pedro ain't showed up with the child prodigy yet. Judy, that sounds like a baby on the porch. Let's have a look. Oh, look, he must have left it here in this basket. Oh, ain't it cute? Oh. Why, she's the cutest thing I ever saw. She has such cute dimples. What do you suppose her name is? Sam, it's embroidered on his dress. 
Oh, Judy, there must be some mistake. This baby can't possibly play the piano. Oh, look at him, Mr. Manfield. Even if he can't play the piano, he'd make a wonderful violinist. A violinist? Yeah, he sure can fiddle with his toes. <laughs> A carload of suds for whiter duds from just one box of super suds. Look, here's a little lady carrying home a carload of suds. Who? Little bitty me? That's right. That super suds box in your hand can make a carload of suds. Proved by an independent authority that just one box of super suds can make 47,200 times its own volume in suds. Enough suds to more than fill a freight car. That's for me. I can't get too much suds for my wash. Get super suds and get a carload of suds to wash washable colors brighter, white clothes whiter. No soap in the world can wash clothes whiter. Remove more dirt than super suds. You need no bleach. How about my hands? Super suds is packed with power, but it's easy on colors gentle to hands. Gives you sweeter smelling washes, too. Well, I'm on my way with my carload of suds. Super sud, super sud, extra sud for whiter dust. No other soap can wash clothes whiter, get out more dirt or wash them brighter. Now back to Judy Canova, the statesman, and the wonderful story about Pecos Bill. <laughs> And a western superman, to say the least. He was the roughest, toughest critter, never known to be a quitter, cause he never had no fear of man nor beast. So yippee i a yippee i o er the toughest critter west of the Alamo. One speed rope they raised him, cyclone out of nowhere. So far, the so-called child prodigy hasn't shown any signs of being able to play the piano, but it does seem to have an exceptional talent for sleeping, which is exactly what it's doing right now. Oh, Miss Judy, that's the cutest little baby I ever saw. Graham, <laughs> <laughs> ain't you lying there in his little old basket? He sure is. Golly, Miss Judy, I think he wants to stay here. What makes you think that? <laughs> He's taking all his things off. <laughs> Geranium, if he wakes up, you can hold him in your lap and give him his bottle. Hold him in my lap? Miss Judy, I'm so bow legged he's falling right through. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but listen, listen, without the baby's mother here, we'll have to take care of it ourselves. You know anything about babies? 
Honey, there's nothing to it. All you have to know about babies is the three Bs. The three Bs? What's that? <laughs> Bathing, bottling, and burping. <laughs> That is on the porch. Oh, I saw him through the window, honey. It's your boyfriend, Mr. Bentley Boxer. Hello, Judy. Hello, Bentley. Come on in. Oh, thanks. I was in the neighborhood, so I thought I'd just drop by. Judy, what's this here in the basket? I've got a baby, Bentley. <laughs> a baby? Well, gosh, you shouldn't be up walking around so soon. <laughs> oh, Bentley, now you woke him up. Oh, gosh, Judy, a, a baby? I... I'm flabbergasted. I, I don't know what to say. Well, it is quite a surprise. This morning, I didn't even know I was going to have it. <laughs> well, Judy, when did the baby arrive? What'd you say? When did the baby arrive? Oh, right after lunch. Pedro delivered it. <laughs> yeah, he left it on the porch. Oh, golly, Judy. For, for a minute, I thought it was yours. <laughs> Bentley, how could you possibly think it was my baby? Well, look at him. He has got your nose. <laughs> well, he has to have something to play with. <laughs> oh, golly. Jesus is a nice little baby. <laughs> uh, but when I see a baby like this, I, I want to take it in my arms and cuddle it. Don't babies kind of give you a homey feeling? Oh, yes, Judy. Now I know I want a home of my own. You can count on me, Bentley. And a wife who's a real helpmate. You can count on me. And children, too, Judy. You can count on me, Bentley. I want about seven or eight. You can stop counting. <laughs> hey, Ben, last night I had a dream about you and me being married. You dreamed you were married to me? Uh -huh. Oh, gosh, Judy, tell me about it. Well, it didn't turn out so good. You see, your mother was living with us. We'd been married for 10 years, and we had seven kids. Oh, it sure was realistic. You were sitting across the breakfast table. Mm -hmm. Judy, what's the matter with this egg? Didn't I tell you I wanted it soft boiled? Well, it should be soft. I boiled it for 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> and look at these paper plates. What's the matter with them? They're the same paper plates we ate dinner off last night. Well, stop complaining. I used an eraser on them. <laughs> Why don't you learn to cook properly? Most women like to mess around the kitchen. So do I. I'm the biggest mess around the kitchen you ever saw. <laughs> and look at this bread. Whole wheat again. You know I like cracked wheat. Well, here's a hammer. Crack it yourself. <laughs> I can't understand it. You're always finding fault. Well, you married me, didn't you? Yes. Women are fools to marry men. But what else is it? <laughs> I gotta think about it. Hey, Bessie, you never give me any money for new clothes. So what? I have absolutely nothing to wear. What'll I do? Pull the shades down. <laughs> oh, Judy, let's stop quarreling. Okay. I'm willing to if you are. Want sugar in your coffee, darling? No, dear. Your face is sweetness enough for me. Yeah, but if you think I'm going to dunk it in your coffee, you're crazy. <laughs> daddy! Oh, Daddy! What is it, Junior? Can, can I have a strawberry lolly pop? <laughs> lolly pop? Mm -hmm. What's he talking about? He wants a strawberry all day, sucker. <laughs> Mama, Mama, can Daddy take me to the Burlesque show again today? Can he, can he, can he, can he, Bentley, did you take Junior to a Burlesque show? Well, yes, but you see, I, I was... I didn't want to go in, Mama, but Daddy twisted my arm. <laughs> when I saw what kind of a show it was, I wanted to take Junior right out of there. Then why didn't you? I twisted his arm. <laughs> Go out and play now. Go on. No, I don't want to go out and play. I don't want to go out and play. <laughs> that boy certainly is a trial. Yes. Sometimes it's hard for me to realize that I'm his father. Well, it's not exactly easy for him either. <laughs> Here, 
But it's a good thing you have a mother-in-law living around this place. What do you mean? Nobody else knows how to handle Junior. I got him quiet just by using child psychology and reasoning with him. Yeah? What did you say to him? I said, Shut up, you little jerk, or I'll paddle your bricks. <laughs> Keep your hands off, Junior. He's a sweet, well-mannered, handsome boy. Handsome? <laughs> when he stayed at my house last summer, I had to buy him back three times from the dog catcher. <laughs> now, Mother, that's no way to talk. After all, Judy is my wife. Brother, what a married life. Here I am, surrounded by noise and confusion, and seven kids. And what did I just get for Father's Day? The news about the eight. <laughs> Bentley, if that's the way you feel, I'm going to pack up and leave. I might have known being your wife would be like this. What do you mean? Well, the day we went to our honeymoon cottage, I had to carry you and your mother piggyback across the doorstep. <laughs> the dream I had. But of course, that ain't really the way I feel about marriage. Oh, I, I didn't think you did, Judy. You love baby so much. Oh, pardon me, Senorita. Oh, hello, Pedro. I want to have a talk with you. I don't think this baby can play the piano. Oh, I know, Senorita. That baby belongs down the street. The little boy who was mining it left it on our porch. Well, where's the child prodigy who plays the piano? Oh, here I am, ma'am. <laughs> Remember me? I'm Herbert. <laughs> <laughs> But, Herbert, you're a grown man. I was expecting child. Well, shucks, that's me. I got the mind of an eight-year-old. <laughs> oh, Pedro, how could you make a mistake like this? You distinctly said he was a child prodigy. Well, Senorita, I forgot to tell you, the first time I heard him play the piano was 25 years ago. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Herbert, but I can't take you on the tour. Well, I don't want to play the piano anyway. I want to be a dramatic actor. I want to make audiences all over the country sad. I want to make them cry. I want to make them suffer. <laughs> well, Herbert, be patient. Coast to Coast Television is just around the corner. <laughs> shampoo if you want naturally bright and beautiful hair. Yes, soaking your hair with even finest liquid or cream shampoos hides its natural luster with dulling soap film. But Halo contains no soap. Made with a new patented ingredient, Halo cannot leave dulling film. Halo reveals the true color and brilliance of your hair the very first time you use it. Leaves it shimmering with glorious natural highlights. And even in hardest water, Halo makes oceans of rich, fragrant lather. Halo carries away loose dandruff and dirt like magic. Needs no lemon or vinegar rinse. Use Halo on your children's hair, too. Say hello to Halo Shampoo. Goodbye to dulling soap film. Get Halo at any cosmetic counter. And remember, soaping dulls hair, Halo glorifies it. So Halo, everybody, Halo. Halo Shampoo, Halo. Ladies and gentlemen, since the end of our radio season is practically here, Judy thought it would be nice to turn this musical spot over to Bud Dant and his orchestra. Bud, ever the gracious gentleman, has elected to play a beautiful ballad that Judy originally produced. La Rue, La Rue, Lily Bolero.
Judy Canova Show was written by Fred Fox and Henry Hooper with John Ward and is produced and directed by Joe Ryan. Tomorrow, Sunday evening, Judy Canova and her big show will appear at the county fair in Bellflower, California. This is Howard Petrie asking you to use Halo Shampoo to glorify your hair and the new Super Suds with a carload of suds for fighter duds. Ladies and gentlemen, here is an important message from our government. World affairs are at a critical point. People everywhere desperately want peace and freedom. We're in the best position of any country to help achieve these objectives, but enemies of peace and freedom seek to weaken and divide us by encouraging petty squabbles over differences in race, color, and religion. If we show ourselves to be united and not divided, we appear stronger and can exert more powerful world leadership for democracy. Let's all avoid prejudice here at home. Let's work together. Let's show the world we mean it when we say we are the United States of America. Now, here's Judy. Thank you, Howard. Folks, it was awfully nice being with you tonight, and I hope we'll all be together again next Saturday night. In the meantime, please don't forget the two products that bring us together each week, Halo Shampoo and Super Sud, the bestest in the world. This is Judy Canova from Hollywood singing, Go to sleepy little baby. Colgate Dental Cream cleans your brass while it cleans your teeth. No other toothpaste cleans teeth better. Colgate cleans teeth thoroughly, safely, reveals natural sparkle and beauty. And scientific tests prove that in seven out of ten cases, Colgate Dental Cream instantly stops unpleasing breath that originates in the mouth. See if you don't agree with the millions who have made Colgate America's favorite toothpaste. After you eat and before every date, use Colgate Dental Cream to clean your breath while you clean your teeth. <laughs> Stay tuned to Kay Kaiser with his Comedy of Errors and the College of Musical Knowledge, which follows immediately. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.